Introducing the Anatomic Bone Patellar Tendon Bone ACL Reconstruction Procedure, Arthroscopic Surgical Approach for Anatomic ACL Reconstruction requires three portals, an anterolateral, an anteromedial, and an accessory anteromedial. The standard anteromedial portal will be used for arthroscopic visualization and should be placed close to the patellar tendon and adjacent to the inferior pole of the patella. The accessory anteromedial portal will be used for drilling and should be lower and more medial than the anteromedial portal. With the surgical markings in place, incise the anteromedial and anterolateral portals. Insert a Conmed Linvitec shaver to excise any remaining ACL tissue. Creation of the accessory anteromedial portal is made under direct visualization with the arthroscope placed in the anterolateral portal looking medially. With the knee flexed at 90 degrees, palpate the medial joint line. Under direct visualization, insert a needle anterior to the medial femoral condyle and above the medial meniscus to avoid damage. The needle should be directed towards the intercondylar notch. Advance the needle to confirm access to the femoral footprint of the ACL. Using an 11 blade, incise the skin, making sure to orient the blade away from the femoral condyle to prevent damaging the articular surface. Switch the arthroscope to the anteromedial portal. Mark the center of the femoral ACL footprint using a microfracturol. Once marked, use the bullseye native footprint ruler to assess the footprint of the native ACL stump. With the ACL footprint identified and the center marked, insert the bullseye femoral footprint guide into the AAM portal with the knee flexed at 90 degrees. Place the guide at the center of the ACL footprint. Once the correct position is achieved, advance the exact pin a few millimeters to notch the bone. Back the exact pin out to check that the location the exact pin correlates to is the center of the footprint. Using the guide to position the exact pin, hyperflex and elevate the knee, then advance the exact pin through the lateral cortex and skin. Using the exact pin as you would a standard depth gauge, manually pull back to hook the head on the external femoral cortex to confirm the aperture to cortex length. Advance the exact pin so that the neck down portion is outside of the skin laterally and the pin is tight in the femoral tunnel. Use a twisting motion to remove the femoral footprint guide. Insert the monofluted sentinel drill bit over the guide pin through the accessory anteromedial portal with the cutting edge facing away from the femoral condyle and advance the drill bit to the femoral ACL footprint. Using a piston-like back and forth motion, advance the sentinel drill bit to the desired depth cautiously to prevent blowout of the lateral femoral cortex. Pull the drill bit back slowly until the blade is visible in the joint space. Keeping the hand off of the trigger, slide the sentinel drill bit past the medial femoral condyle and out of the portal, making sure to keep the blade oriented away from the condylar surface. Place the two free ends of the number two passing suture through the eyelet of the guide pin. Then, pull the guide pin through the femur laterally, making sure to keep a finger in the suture loop to prevent it from being pulled into the knee joint. Once the suture ends are retrieved laterally, pull the looped end of the suture all the way to the entrance of the femoral tunnel. Switch the arthroscope to the anterolateral portal. Next, insert the light wave ablator into the anteromedial portal to mark the center of the tibial ACL footprint. Set the angle of the pin ACL guide to the desired settings. Insert the tip into the anteromedial portal, placing the tip of the guide into the center of the tibial ACL footprint. 
Next, advance the external guide sleeve flush to the anterior tibial cortex. Using the ConMed Linvitec M-Power two handpiece and pin driver attachment, advance the guide pin until it meets the point of the guide arm. Then depress the pin ACL drill guide lever to remove the sleeve. Remove the pin ACL guide from the guide pin and joint. A curette can be placed over the point of the guide pin to protect against inadvertent advancement when drilling. Be sure to use the appropriate size badger or sentinel drill bit to drill the tibial tunnel. Next, place a probe into the accessory antromedial portal to bring the loop of the suture into the joint. Retrieve the loop through the tibial tunnel using suture retrieval forceps. Load the suture limbs of the bone patellar tendon bone graft into the passing suture loop. Pull the BTB graft into the joint while hyperflexing and elevating the knee to ease graft passage. Once the graft is positioned appropriately in the femoral tunnel, insert the BioScrew hyperflex guide wire through the AAM portal and into the femoral tunnel. Advance the tap, rotating clockwise until the appropriate depth marking to create threads in the femoral tunnel and BTB graft. Remove the tap from the joint, leaving the guide wire in place. Load the Genesis Matrix Interference Screw onto the trilobe driver and slide onto the guide wire into the joint until flush with the aperture and graft. Insert the screw anterior to the graft for fixation. Then remove the driver and guide wire from the joint. Once the graft is positioned appropriately in the tibial tunnel, cycle the knee with distal tension on the graft to remove laxity. Insert the guide wire. With the knee in 15 degrees of flexion, keep tension on the graft and apply posterior drawer force to the knee. Advance the tap, rotating clockwise until the appropriate depth marking to create threads in the tibial tunnel and BTB graft. Remove the tap, leaving the guide wire in place, and then insert the Genesis Matrix Interference Screw anterior to the graft. Follow the normal procedures to close the incisions.